Hey y'all, welcome to our homestead. Welcome back inside of our greenhouse. We are doing some fall planting. We've already done a little bit, but since we live down here in zone 8B, we can extend that season a little bit. And obviously inside the greenhouse, that's extended even more. So let's show you what we are planting in our greenhouse and then outside also. Let's get going. First thing I wanted to show you here are some fall green beans. I'm super excited about these. These are the Blue Lakes and they are my favorite. I am planting them in these new planters here in the greenhouse to help nit fix nitrogen into these beds and obviously enjoy the green beans as well. So we have some carrots and beets coming up and they're struggling a little bit, probably because I didn't amend this bed very well, but you can see we've got some beans trying to help fix some nitrogen in between them. I've got more beets. I've got some Danvers carrots, but again, then I've got mushrooms and that's not good because they are all over this bed from the topsoil that I chose. Over here in this bed, super excited. My first time growing arugula and it looks amazing. I've got more beans here in this bed to help fix nitrogen in this bed, but this arugula is awesome. Unfortunately, my lettuce seeds didn't want to germinate. It's probably because the soil is just not conducive to it. It might not be fine enough and it might be a little compact. All right, check this out. We've got some winter beans here, some fava beans, and we still have some coming up. We've got some tall ones here and some just germinating. So these are gonna be great. First time I've grown these actually. We've got some broccoli in the center here, and I'm going to need to thin those out, but I didn't know how my germination was going to be on those. So we got some broccoli, and then on this end, we've got some spinach. And as you can see, my germination rate on this spinach is terrible because I planted about 25 uh, seeds and I got one plant. So I think my seeds were just a little too old. Our Egyptian walking onions are a perennial and they are just hanging out here in this bed. That's where they're gonna live for a long time. Next to the Swiss chard, which is also a perennial. So that's a perennial bed there. We've got our peppers over here. They're not looking great. It's probably because of the uh, nutrition in the bed and I did have a white fly problem that I had to take care of. Over here, the eggplant hated the super hot um, weather. And now look, it has bounced back and it looks amazing. So this eggplant is, is starting to actually produce a lot. We've gotten some good meals out of it in the past two weeks since it cooled down a bit. So thankful for that. <laughs> so I've been a little busy. My collards back there are covered in aphids. I gotta take care of that. And as you can see, I did not harvest the seeds for my Chinese cabbage. I got one cabbage that sprouted back from the seeds that fell from it, and I've gotta take those out of there. And then I've got some Chinese cabbage growing in my banana plant here. So I gotta, I gotta get those out of there. And they reached over and actually sprouted in my uh, Swiss chard bed, in the perennial bed right there next to the green onion, or the uh, Egyptian walking onions. I did talk about being able to control things a little bit better in the greenhouse, but that's also dependent on time. And I've been doing a lot of other big projects. As you know, if you watch the channel regularly, got the new solar system up and running, got other huge projects. Haven't pruned these tomatoes, but they are still looking good. These are Romas and they should go until probably early December, mid-December, give or take. So you can see in this bed next to the, to the tomatoes that I've got some damage. I'm looking at that. Somebody's coming in here and nibbling and that's not good. We have some broccoli, some rapini broccoli, some Brussels sprouts, and also some more collard greens but also some lettuce from last year where those seeds fell into the bed. So I have to admit a problem that I have and I really need to get over it. And that is not picking vegetables out of the garden when they are overripe. So I have talked about in the past, don't let things 
rot in your garden. But when something is growing like this, I tend to leave it, and that takes up space. Even though these carrots have been in here for a long time, they still look good, but they're, they're just not edible anymore. They're tough, they're woody, and you know the girls like to pull out the tiny ones and eat them. But I need to clear this bed out, and I'm going to make way for this. One of the last sweet potatoes that we have. Now, it may produce a few. This is a purple sweet potato, which is really cool. I think it's in Okinawa and my wife loves these. They're super sweet. They're used a lot in Filipino cooking. So this one is going in here and I, I just need to bite the bullet and pull things out. I just don't like to waste things and I feel like I'm wasting food when I pull it out like this, but it's really inedible. So I'll just give it to the chickens. They'll love it. I apologize if I went through that so fast. So for zone 8B, especially down here in Texas where we have an extended growing season, you can plant root vegetables, you can plant uh, things like Swiss chard and spinach, any cruciferous vegetable like a broccoli, a Brussels sprout, things like that, anything in that family. Tomatoes you should have already had in the ground, but they will go through and produce until about, for us, maybe early December, give or take. It all depends on when that first frost comes. And you can also plant winter beans and lettuces, and then obviously your fall cover crops. They'll germinate pretty quick and sprout up pretty fast, um, depending on your, your weather fluctuation. Some years it might be a little different, but those are the things that you gotta get in the ground right now. So here's another area that I really need to take care of. I'm gonna show you how I do that, but I'm going to plant a winter cover crop to add uh, nutrients and nitrogen especially to the soil and it will be a green manure so I'll do a chop and drop on it uh, later and this is where I had amaranth and corn and some squash earlier in the year and I let it get out of control I added some compost you can see it's still mounted up in the middle I need to take everything back take out the remaining amaranth that's still good and then I'm gonna do this I'm gonna cover everything with this silage tarp. Now, in the past I've done black plastic, but these are way better. They're twice as thick. I just got them, I'm so excited to use them. I'll list them in the uh, description below the video, but I'm going to kill off all of the grass in this area once again, and the grass and weeds. Most specifically, the vining grasses, which are nasty. I think mine is Bermuda and fescue, and some people call it Johnny grass, some people call it something else, whatever. I have those, both of those, and they are terrible. Anyhow, we're gonna get this cleaned up, pick the rest of the amaranth off and save it, and get this done, because I am way behind schedule. I'm also gonna add this cover crop to this area of the garden here, which had our potatoes in it earlier this, this year, and it got overrun with grasses and weeds also. You can see I've got that regular black plastic on it, and that's been on there for a while to kill off those grasses. I'm gonna till it, shallow till, and I'm gonna add this, because I don't know how many of those weeds have survived, so I don't wanna take the chance of having those in there either, and I need to add some nutrients back to this area. Hey, we are trying out this year Johnny's Seeds. Um, I've never used these before, never used this company, but uh, I've heard a lot of great things about them. So we're gonna give them a shot and see what happens. So our question from our amaranth video was answered. It has produced more off the side of the stalk that was laying down and these shoots are coming up and they are producing more flower heads with more amaranth seed on it. So that's pretty cool. So here's the old wound from cutting the top flower off earlier and we have more. So that's a nice little tip that I didn't even know earlier that they will continue to produce even if you clip off that top head. If you leave that stalk in the ground, it's probably gonna just continue to go. Let's save this, get it out of here. So I'm doing the same thing as I did before, and I'm trying to create a stale seed bed. So I did a video on that. I learned it from urban farmer Curtis Stone, big channel, amazing gardener, and you need to kill off all those grasses and weeds first. And the only way to really do that, the best way to do that with kind of a no-till idea is to use a silage tarp or black plastic to kill it off. 
Now you can do a shallow till on it, like an inch and a half or so, but this is the problem right here. This is a hay grass that is really nasty and it's really tough and you can see there's seed heads all over it. So you got to kill those seeds off and the only way you can really do that is with heat. And then there's things like this that sprout up really fast. These are trees and if you don't get these knocked down and pulled out or dead in some, oh my goodness, and they're full of ants. Kill off the trees. Take the big tough things out of there that won't break down that fast. Everything else will probably break down quickly, but these uh, amaranth stalks probably won't. Now I probably could have used a tractor bucket to do that, but the tractor's broken. So that'll be a video in the near future is replacing the fuel filter, which was extremely difficult to find just for a 20 year old tractor. It's pretty crazy. So when you're doing this, put the black side up because if you put the white side up, it's gonna reflect the heat away from it. It'll still get hot under there, but not as hot as it will with that black color absorbing the, uh, the heat from the sun and putting it down into killing whatever's under there. Time to pick the rest of these carrots. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our entire playlist on our greenhouse. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.